Alright guys, in today's video we're going to be doing a routine trim on this little guy. Um, he's kind of a special case. He's got what is known as founder or chronic laminitis. If you don't know what that means, don't worry, I'll try to give you the best explanation I can today. My name is Sheldon and this is the SNS Horseshoe and YouTube channel. And if you're new to the channel, welcome and if you've watched some of our other videos, welcome back. Okay, before we get into kind of the meat and potatoes of this particular trim, a um, little background on these guys. I've been trimming them for about a year now. Um, when I first came, they were a little bit overgrown. She'd had a hard time, she being the owner, had a hard time getting a farrier to come out, didn't want to work on mini horses, and, and I don't have a problem with it. So, anyway, we got in contact, and I've been, these guys have been on, give or take, an eight week schedule over the last year, and, and they've been maintaining pretty good. And I keep saying they, so I think I better clarify. So this guy, he lives with his herd mate, and I'll be showing her when I trimmed her in a future video. Um, so stay tuned for that. Okay, let's get into some terminology when talking about laminitis. or Because when I first was started chewing and talking to people, people would throw around all these terms. I didn't know exactly what they meant by whatever they were talking about. Anyway, so there's some different terms. Chronic laminitis, founder, acute laminitis, a laminitic episode you'll hear people say. So this is how I group that. Um, so in my mind, chronic laminitis and founder, I group those together. That's the same thing to me. And basically that's when the coffin bone rotates. And there's, there's no going back after that. And that's why it's chronic laminitis. Um, Anyway, and then, so a laminitic episode or acute laminitis, that in my mind is when a horse has a flare-up, you know, gets out, gets some green grass, maybe gets into the grain barrel, has, gets laminitis, gets pretty sore on his feet, but it doesn't end up rotating. And those ones, they can recover, um, if taken care of, get the vet involved. Anyway, but those don't lead to founder and chronic laminitis where the lamina stay stretched forever and you can always see that. Um, also another kind of disclaimer, those people that go out there and claim that you can heal laminitis and founder with some kind of fancy trim or some kind of snake oil supplement, um, I feel like they just give people false hope. On, and maybe it's just because they have a different definition of cure or and and I think that's just if a horse has founder you're always going to be able to tell that it's founder if it has chronic laminitis you're always going to be able to see that and maybe people's definition of curing laminitis or founder see there I go using different terms anyway people saying they can cure it means different things to get one back to sound yeah you might be able to get one back to sound just depends on the horse to say you can get all of them and cure them and to where you can't see it again you might be stretching the tr truth a little bit but anyway um, if you have a horse that's or a pony that's in this situation the best thing you can do get your vet involved get your farrier involved and and put it together I'm gonna here in a second I'm gonna do a split screen of what I have in my mind the, the picture I have in my mind when I'm working on a horse like this before we get there, I'll, you kind of notice we move to the back feet now. And kind of typical for laminitis or founder, it's usually a front feet thing. Every now and then you'll get some that have it in the hind feet. But this pony just has it both sides on the front. The hinds are pretty normal. They're, they're stretched a little bit. And I do bring the toe back on the hinds, you'll see. Um, but most of the time, it's both fronts when it happens. And actually, this guy's herd mate um, that I'll be showing you in a different video. He actually has it in one of his front feet, which is pretty strange. Usually it's a both front feet kind of thing, at least the ones I've seen. Um, but anyway, make sure and go check that video out when I get it out. Um, anyway, so here's the, the split screen. I'll show you what I have in my mind. Like I said, not so much on these hind feet. These hind feet are pretty normal, but the front feet, what I'm thinking when I'm doing that. I've got a picture of a of a foot that has foundered or has chronic laminitis, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so right here you can see that there's just not a lot of sole depth here. <clears throat> I guess an, a disclaimer, this is not the foot that we're working on today. This is just a random picture um, that I have in my mind when I'm working on a, on a horse or a pony like this. 
Um, this is what I have a pretty good idea that this is what this pony that we're working on today's foot looks like. Again, this is not the one that we're working on today. But this is the mental picture that I have in my mind when I'm going to work on something like this. Um, okay, so we see there's not a lot of sole depth right here. And that coffin bone is tipped down. This is the coffin bone or pedal bone, whatever you want to call it, or P3, some people will call it. So the, this is the dorsal aspect of it. And this is the dorsal aspect of the hoof wall. And in a good healthy foot like you saw in that x-ray, those two lines are parallel. And because of founder and chronic laminitis, the distance between here has increased and there's what they'll, some people refer to as a laminar wedge here and it's stretched and pulled away and, and this toe out here is causing leverage. And uh, anyway, so as we trim, we're keeping all this in mind. I'm gonna draw some lines here of where I wanna trim off. You'll see, take these heels back and as you get towards the tip of that coffin bone, you're almost trimming nothing off. If there's some excess growth there, take it, but you're really taking a lot of heel off. But here at the tip of the coffin bone, I might take the sole that needs to come out, and sometimes I won't touch nothing on this one. He'd actually grown quite a bit, um, so I did pair out a little bit, but I'm not taking a lot there. And then all this horn out here, where the lamina is not connected, is not doing nothing but causing leverage, and that's why ones with laminitis you'll see a dish toe out here. This one doesn't have a dish as much, and the one that we work on today doesn't have a dish, but some of them have a real bad dish out here. And all that is is leverage out there. So I take, and you'll see me do it on this little pony with my nippers. I just take and nip it about right there. And so if you are working with a vet and you do get some x-rays, I kind of take an imaginary line down the tip of the coffin bone. And that's about where I start that cut. And then I'll, you'll watch me all rasp this all flat. Uh, I might run my rasp around the toe a little bit. And then once I get it up on the hoof stand, I'll take my rasp. And I'll kind of run it and just kind of take this excess right here off. And so you can see that this line right here and the tip of the coffin bone are kind of parallel. And we've taken all this leverage off because the lamina that's connecting the hoof wall to the dorsal aspect of the coffin bone is all, it's not working. It's all coming apart. And so every time that horse or equine steps, this just leverage on it gets pulled and they get that dish on the toe. And then on the heels back here, on these ones that have foundered, their heels always overgrow. You trim it back six weeks, four weeks, eight weeks, whatever kind of schedule you got them on, you come back and that heel's grown back up. So it's just a constant battle to get this heel back, get this toe back. But anyway, you can kind of see the image that I have in my mind when I'm working on a horse like that. And that's just what I wanted to show you here with this x-ray. And I'll show you real quick, we'll show you another image of a normal foot again. And that's kind of what I'm trying to do here with these red lines, is trim a normal foot back into this foot. Okay, there you go, there's normal and foundered. If you want to take a pause right there and compare the two, you can. If not, we're going to keep moving. Actually, let's pause it real quick and zoom in. I took and drew some lines on this. So the red line, you can see, that's where the heels have grown so when a heel grows especially on these foundered horses it doesn't grow straight down it grows forward and so on the x-ray I was showing you that I wanted to take height off of it but also I care where the heels are coming in contact with the ground and so in this picture the red line you can see where they're coming in contact with the ground and then I've trimmed the one side back so that green line showing you where those heels are coming in contact with the ground and you got to get that pressure coming from the ground to the right part of the foot. If not, it could cause pain and distortions and all that stuff. And so that yellow line is about the widest part of the frog. And so I've nipped it back to the green line and then you'll see me with my rasp. I'll take a couple licks with my rasp and I'll bring it back to the yellow line. And that's not only, like I said, taking height off the heels to get the bony column line back up, but also getting the ground pressure coming up to the foot in the right direction and that's also going to help it grow more correct later on and finally that orange arrow I got pointing there is basically just pointing to the stretched lamina or the laminitis 
And I thought I'd point that out while we're zoomed up close here. Okay, let's get back to the process of me trimming it and hope that was helpful for you. Okay, if you like digging into a little bit of anatomy there, please let me know in the comments if that was helpful or if you'd just rather watch me trim it. Anyway, let me know either way so I'll know for future videos. Okay, so as you see me trimming here, keep in the back of your mind those red lines we drew on that x-ray. So you can see we've already brought those heels back. Um, and now we're taking that toe off. Um, and like I kind of mentioned, I'll kind of reiterate it. The reason you're taking that toe off is because when they found her, that lam the lamina that holds the dorsal wall of the hoof wall to the coffin bone gets all damaged and it can't support itself and so it just gets any leverage on there just gets drug out and so by cutting that toe off not only are you realigning the the hoof capsule in the bony column but you're also taking leverage off of the lamina taking stress off the lamina helping that foot stay as healthy as possible Okay guys, we're back up on a front foot that's, like I said, founder. So while I'm doing this, remember those red lines I drew on that x-ray, kind of keep those in mind. Um, and so I'm putting that kind of third and final red line into this foot and again, getting that toe backed up. And something you want to be careful here, you don't want to just go crazy on the, the top of these feet because if you shave all that hoof wall off, like I said, you're wanting to line up the dorsal aspect of the hoof wall and the dorsal part of P3 or the coffin bone. But if you go shaving on them too much with your rasp, you're going to take all the integrity out of the hoof wall. So there's a balance there you of taking, backing that foot up, getting the leverage off, and also leaving enough integrity in the hoof wall to, to be able to hold that 
hoof capsule together because if you shave it too thin right there then it, the foot capsule is going to move too much and you've done more damage than good. So right here like I mentioned I'm just taking my rasp just giving each heel a couple of licks getting those heels brought back to the widest part of the frog. You can see we got a nice round shaped foot right there. Um, anyway so I'm pretty happy with that. Here I'm just taking a little bit of sole pressure off of the the corn areas off the bars there um, anyway kind of a little disclaimer this isn't a cure-all fix-all some ponies some horses with founder have to have shoes um, these guys weren't super lame when I started out on them um, but this they're pretty sound at the moment and we keep them on an eight-week schedule sometimes you got to go down to a four-week schedule it just depends get your vet involved get your farrier involved it's just what works for these ones that I'm working on and a couple others. Other ones you gotta take more extreme measures and it's kinda like I talked about in the video of the navicular horse I did with the banana shoes. Some things work for some horses but the next horse you have with the same problem you gotta change it up so. And like I've said in previous videos this stuff is what I've learned from my experience and mostly my opinion so remember that's probably worth what you paid for it. Have a good one and appreciate you watching.